Hi, my name is Doris, and um, I'm going to talk to you guys about something that you guys can all relate to, which is um, intelligence. And the reason that I want to talk about this is because early on in the year, some guy told me that he believed that people who are just smart, um, they don't have to work hard, and they can just get good grades. So I'm going to argue um, the opposite of that, and my proposition is, in our pursuit towards intelligence and success, hard work and ambition will beat talent. So first, um, I'm going to define intelligence and success, and um, in this, in my argument, I'm, um, I'm going to define intelligence and success as the ability to understand information quickly and apply this information in everyday life. And I'm going to define talent as innate intelligence. <clears throat> so my claims are, first, um, number one, education and the environment play a huge role in intelligence. Number two, the ambition to succeed is more important than talent. And number three, working hard will overpower talent in the long run. <clears throat> so my first claim, education and the environment play a huge role in intelligence. According to the APA, which is the American Psychological Association, over the past 100 years, Americans' mean IQ has increased. So this, this shows that um, over time, um, education has been getting better since it cannot be due to evolution since it's only over the past 100 years. Between 1900 and 2012, it rose nearly 30 points. So that means that the average person of 2012 had a higher IQ than 95% of the population had in the 1900. Since 1950, we've gone from 12% of Americans exposed to education after high school to 52%. This shows the impact education has on IQ. In addition, studies have shown that identical twins who grew up in different homes tend to have a bigger difference in IQ than twins who grew up in the same home. This shows that environment also has plays a huge role in intelligence. My second claim is that the ambition to succeed is more important than talent. So many people think that you're either creative or you're logic, like you either, you're either good in arts or you're good at math, but studies have shown that this is not true. Dr. Jeff Anderson said that it's absolutely true that some brain functions occur in one or the other side of the brain. Language tends to be on the left, attention more on the right, but people don't tend to have a stronger left or right sided brain network. It seems to be more determined, it seems to be determined more connection by connection. So this shows that even though we believe like we're only good at one thing, we can actually pursue anything we want to pursue. It's just the limits that we set on ourselves. And this kind of undermines talent as like this big thing that determines our life. Studies have also shown that children who are praised for their intelligence do worse in school than children who are praised for their effort. So basically, if you praise your children for being for being born smart, like you're really smart, instead of saying that good job or you praise them for your effort, um, they will do worse because they'll believe that they will rely on their intelligence instead of working hard to do better. So to move on to my third claim, um, working hard will overpower talent in the long run. In, in a t um, the Terman study, there, he looked for a th um, many people who were said to be gifted at an early age. So their IQ, he had one group of an IQ above 150 and another IQ above 180, and he found 168,000 people who qualified for <coughs> um, his experiment. And basically, um, he followed those people on to later life, and many of the people were successful. They had um, master's degrees, bachelor's degree. However, there is this um, one individual, woman, William Schockel, and his IQ was not high enough to be um, a termite. That's a term that they used for people who, who had high IQs. And he was um, shut out of the experiment because he was not deemed gifted, which is um, he didn't have. He was tested twice, and he didn't have an IQ of over 135. However, um, he went to Harvard and got a PhD. He joined the Bell Telephone Laboratories and devised the point contact transistor in 1947 and the junction transistor in 1948. 
and this accomplishment earned him the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1970. <clears throat> and none of the Terman's gifted children um, went on to win a Nobel Prize. So this shows that hard work can overpower talent in the long run. Also, Dr. Anders Ericsson, a professor at the Florida State University, um, studied expert performance in sports, music, and mathematics. And he found that this so-called innate ability would not um, determine success, but it's, it's just a matter of how many hours that you put into a subject. So to conclude, um, <coughs> In our pursuit towards intelligence and success, hard work and ambition will overpower talent. Thank I appreciated the uh, reason that you gave the argument and talked about you, you know your motivation for talking about it. I think that helps establish a little bit of controversy on this. I do think <laughs> that you need to do a little bit more on this because I, I would assume that most people think that there are plenty of bright people who, if they don't work hard, uh, waste whatever intelligence they have. And there are plenty of people who overcome a lack of innate intelligence by hard work. So you're really describing something that I suspect that most people probably believe in the first place. Uh, the stronger part of the argument is the issue about whether or not there's going to be automatic success because people reach a level of intelligence as is measured by the IQ tests. And I think that I needed a little bit more development. I thought you had a good list of what the main proposition was and the secondary claims. They were easy to follow. You did a good job signposting the supporting material. <coughs> I think the uh, phrasing on the second point, uh, your second supporting point, is still a little bit uh, awkward and uh, it, it doesn't really you know, uh, fit as well with the other points as uh, I think they do in supporting your main point. I thought the third point was very clearly stated and it's got a very solid statement of the position as it relates to the claim that you're making. On the evidence, you've got lots of examples, uh, a little bit of statistical information. I did think that there were some good testimony evidence, although some of the examples and some of the statistics do seem uh, a little old. Uh, the, the change in what the average IQ is between um, the, turn of the, last, uh, the turn of the previous century and this last century, I thought that was uh, pretty solid. But, but your example of the one guy, for instance, who didn't fit the IQ qualifications, the termites that they referred to, who managed to win the Nobel Prize and none of the others did, I thought that was a good example. Of course, it is an example from more than 70 years ago, so yeah, that's a little problematic. It would be nice to have something that's uh, more updated. Um, you, <coughs> you did a good job kind of explaining what the self-imposed <coughs> limits are. You, uh, I, the study on praise and how that works, I just not quite sure how that fits into your argument about whether or not it's hard work or whether or not it's innate intelligence. That sounds to me like it's a nurture argument uh, that's really kind of off to the side there and doesn't really focus on the comparison that you're making. I thought that you did a pretty good job presenting, although it does look a little awkward because you kind of got your hands locked in a spot and they never move except when you're turning the pages. And uh, I think you need to be a little bit more animated as a speaker. All right. Thank you.